Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Samuel Bankman Freed and the collapse of the cryptocurrency exchange, FTX? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, including the timeline of the collapse, then I'll offer my analysis. Samuel Bankman Freed was born in Stanford, California, on March 6, 1992. Sometimes Samuel goes by the initials SBF. His parents were both professors at Stanford Law School. After graduating from high school in Hillsborough, California, Samuel attended the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He graduated in 2014 with a degree in physics. In 2013, prior to graduating, Samuel started working at a proprietary trading firm. He stayed there until September of 2017, at which time he moved to California and worked for a charity for a few months. In November of 2017, Samuel established a quantitative trading firm called Alameda Research. Samuel was successful with his trades in April of 2019, he and a man named Gary Wang founded a cryptocurrency exchange called FTX. The exchange became active one month later in May. It allowed people to buy, sell, and store Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. The exchange used a native token referred to as FTT. This becomes important later. One of the main advantages of FTX was that it permitted investors to place risky bets which are not permitted in the United States. Samuel would eventually move his company to the Bahamas. Over the next few years, FTX was extremely successful. In 2020, the company acquired a mobile tracking application for $150 million. In July 2021, a $900 million funding round valued FTX at $18 billion. In September of that year, FTX sponsored the Mercedes Formula One team. In October, the company raised capital at a valuation of $25 billion. In January 2022, FTX raised $400 million at a valuation of $32 billion. The next month, FTX ran a commercial during the Super Bowl. It featured Larry David. In June, the company purchased the naming rights to the Miami Heat's home court for $135 million. In August, banking regulators ordered FTX to stop making false and misleading claims about whether funds in the exchange were insured by the government. On November 2, 2022, a website called Coindesk, which provides information on cryptocurrency, leaked a balance sheet from Alameda Research. This indicated that FTX was lending its own token, FTT, to Alameda Research. Four days later, the CEO of a company called Binance said his company would sell its holdings of FTT, about $580 million worth. This led to a figurative run on the bank. Many people started selling FTT. Investors and customers lost all confidence in the value of FTT. The next day, November 8, the value of FTT fell by 72%. Three days later, on November 11, FTX filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the state of Delaware. Samuel resigned as the CEO of the company. This represented an outstanding fall from grace. Samuel's net worth had been around $26 billion at its highest point. Right before his company imploded, his net worth was around $16.2 billion, so down about $10 billion, but still pretty good. As of November 11, 2022, his net worth was about $3, so no billion was involved, just three ordinary dollars. That same day, Samuel tweeted, I'm really sorry, again, that we ended up here. On November 14, he tweeted, What happened? There have been various reports about discrepancies with the finances of FTX. It appears as though Samuel transferred billions of dollars from FTX to Alameda Research. 
$1 billion is unaccounted for. Samuel is facing a number of investigations, including from the authorities in the Bahamas and the U.S. federal government. This could lead to bad news regarding Samuel's ability to remain in the realm of the non-incarcerated. The situation with FTX is already being compared to Enron and Bernie Madoff. The comparison to Bernie is particularly appropriate considering the curious connection between their last names and their behaviors. Bernie Madoff made off with investors' money. Samuel Bankman Freed attracted people who wanted to be freed from banks, then allegedly fried their money. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, the idea behind cryptocurrency is that it allows transactions to be anonymous. In reality, criminals who have tried to use cryptocurrency have not always been successful at evading the authorities, but certainly it's more secretive than using cash, checks, or credit cards. One of the reasons somebody would select cryptocurrency is to make risky investments that are not allowed in certain jurisdictions. Essentially, these cryptocurrency users desire the stability of an established currency, like the U.S. dollar, while retaining a Wild West feel to transactions. The problem is that without regulation, cryptocurrency will never be stable. With regulation, it will never be clandestine. Item number two, it sounds as though Samuel wanted the U.S. government to regulate cryptocurrency a little bit so that it would attract traditional investors and become more stable, but he didn't want it regulated so much that it would lose the secret aspect. He was trying to find a win-win scenario in a situation where that seems unlikely. Many users of cryptocurrency accept the risk of instability in order to keep the secrecy. They are not interested in Samuel's vision of a regulated cryptocurrency industry. The industry did not trust Samuel for a few reasons. He was using his influence to push for federal regulations, while at the same time dodging U.S. oversight by running his company from the Bahamas. He appointed himself the lone representative of the industry, and it seemed as though he was getting close to politicians to protect the interests of FTX at the expense of the company's competitors. Samuel was the second largest individual donor to Joe Biden in the 2020 election cycle, personally donating $5.2 million. He was the second largest Democratic donor in the 2022 midterm elections. He donated about $36 million. The CEO of Binance, who crushed FTX by selling off FTT, thought that Samuel was insidiously lobbying against industry players. Item number three, Samuel crafted his image to make himself look different than other technology visionaries. He wanted to appear trustworthy and noble. He believed in a concept called effective altruism. This is the idea of using one's ability to reason to have a positive impact on the world. Samuel's application of this idea was to make as much money as he could in order to give that money to charity. Samuel was planning on giving away most of his wealth during the course of his life. To be fair, he can still do that, except now he can do it by donating something like $2.50. Samuel maintained a disheveled appearance and was always casual. Some people found this atypical behavior to be disarming. Samuel also loved video games. He played League of Legends. One time he was playing this game during a meeting where he was trying to encourage the venture capital firm Sequoia to invest hundreds of millions of dollars into FTX. The company must have been impressed by his multitasking. Sequoia invested $214 million. Of course, that has now been marked down to zero. The company told its investors, quote, We are in the business of taking risk. Some investments will surprise to the upside, and some will surprise to the downside, unquote. They also claim that they ran a rigorous due diligence process before investing in FTX. There is the sense that all these supposedly sophisticated investment firms really have no idea what they're doing. A business journalist named Adam Fisher wrote a profile of Samuel, which was on Sequoia's website. The profile has now been taken down, but it said, quote, I don't know how, I just do. SPF 
is a winner, unquote. I think the bottom line is that Samuel was able to use his billions of dollars to get favorable reviews from the media and purchase influence in Washington. Item number four, Samuel promoted himself as an unconventional genius who was able to navigate complex financial situations more effectively than other people. He was a visionary. He could see into the future. This explained his tremendous success and his company's multi-billion dollar valuation. In reality, Samuel may be very intelligent, but he wasn't doing anything special. He was playing a shell game with FTX and Alameda Research by using complex accounting methods. He was trying to keep everybody happy by moving money around. But when investors discovered what he was doing, everybody wanted to pull their money out at the same time. Item number five, the irony of the case of Samuel Bankman Freed is he set out to prove that cryptocurrency could be a safe place for people and companies to put their money. He wanted it to become mainstream. However, by running a $32 billion cryptocurrency exchange into the ground, he proved that it will never be a safe place for customers or investors. His story is a warning that some people will heed and others will not. Which brings me to item number six. There will always be people who are willing to take a tremendous risk for the opportunity to experience a tremendous reward. Cryptocurrency is one of those industries that may not exist for too much longer in any meaningful form, but if it is annihilated, nothing will change. There will always be another risky investment right around the corner. Risky financial investments are a little bit like illegal drugs. No matter how dangerous they are, how ill-advised they are, how expensive they are, there will always be a predictable number of people who use them. People looking for an unrealistically high return on investment will invent a group of magical superheroes to support their fantasy. Samuel understood this and was able to join the league by pretending to be a legend. Those are my thoughts in the case of Samuel Bankman Freed. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be as intriguing as a bank man who freed billions of dollars from investors. Thanks for watching.